it's, it's good to, to come and just to share uh, God's word with you this morning. And uh, I pray that it will, it will be a blessing on, on, on us all. Um, every, all of us have a story, like for example that sharing time, we really do enjoy just hearing these stories. And uh, uh, you know, you, when somebody starts a story, you ever feel like you get drawn in to hear more and more about a story. And uh, the Bible is full of amazing, amazing stories that, that just draw you in. Um, and these stories that we often read in the Bible are often part of a, a larger narrative. And that's really what I want to talk to about today. What is the story of the Bible? And if, I, if you were to go into the street today and say, what's your understanding of what Christians believe? It was something like this. Now, in, 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 this I'm going to try and draw. I'm not a great drawer, but I'll, I'll use some words in a bit of a diagram. But it's just to try and give you a, an animation, just a, a, a visual representation of, of how I, I think about things. And, and so this, is, this could be the story that could be in a lot of people's minds as to what the Bible, what the, the Christians believe. And that is, we live here on earth, most of us do. Okay, so let's go for earth here. And there's me. And my lifespan goes something like this. Do you recognise that story? That's a story that I think a lot of people will think, and, and maybe to, to, to some extent, maybe you might think this is the message of the Bible. It's me and here, there's my life, and at some kind of point, and I will go to either heaven or I'll go to hell. And, um, and you know, the way that, that many of all would view this would be that if, if, I, if, I, if I, my life is kind of a good life, it's above the line, and it's, then everything is fine, and if not, I'm below the line, and at some assigned point, I, I will either spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. Now, that, that, you can get that picture and you think, well, that, that's maybe part of the Christian story. Um, it's not. And this one kind of a to you. It's not. I can't go It's working. Is it Okay, we'll, we'll pick up the job then. Okay. And so, so part of the, the message that the people think is, is, is that, and yet that is just, it's kind of half right, half truth, but it's not really the full truth of what the, the, the gospel, or what the, the gospel story is, is all about. <coughs> because at the centre of this story is me, and yet at the centre of the story in the Bible is God, is God coming down and being amongst us and bringing heaven to earth. So, if you were to look for the places that we could look to, it's, it's in Mark. And it, and it says something like this, it's in Mark chapter 1. And it says, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now you're thinking, Right, okay, we're about to, it's the start of the book of Mark, we're about to learn what this message is, what the story of all the Bible is. So the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ. And then the next part says, it is written in Isaiah the prophet. And so suddenly, we're, we're thinking, <coughs> I thought this was the start of the story, the beginning of the Gospel, and it's just he said in the next line, it is written by Isaiah the prophet. And it's taken us back to another story. And this is what the Bible has just done. So, so Mark, the, the story of the Gospel, is part of a story. It's, in fact, it's like a river. We've jumped into a river midstream. And the story is already flowing. And here it is. The Gospel comes. The Gospel comes. And, and so you're, you're realising that this story is, is, is something to do with Israel, because Isaiah was a prophet that came in 
uh, the, uh, after the restored after the exile, the, the, the Jews were, were, had a, a great agreement, covenant with God, and they did their own thing. <coughs> they kept doing their own thing, and they were taken prisoners by the Babylonians who invaded it, and then they were returned to the promised land. Isaiah comes with some prophecies, and he talks about uh, a man coming in the wilderness. And, and so sometimes the Bible, understanding what the Bible story is, 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 is difficult because there is, it's more than just going in at it and, and taking a snapshot, there's something more. So let, let's go down. Uh, so for a few more verses in Mark chapter 1, and it says this, after John, that's, that's John the Baptist, was put in prison, verse 14, <coughs> Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. So, okay, now we've got to what the good news is. So what, what is it? What is the good news? It says the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. That is the good news that we have to believe. Mm -hmm. So it's saying, repent and believe the good news. So that, that's a very different story from this. You know, the, the story here that Jesus is saying, the good news is that the time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Mm -hmm. It's about the kingdom of God coming onto earth, into earth, about that being fulfilled. And that's a story about God, about God and his people, about Jesus, not this. And, and uh, this, is, this is a really powerful story. And let's say it, it comes, Jesus comes in Mark chapter 1, midst of another story. And, and I, want, I want us, if, do you think it's a pleasure? But let's get this a go. This will be what I'm trying to say of the story of the Bible. I'm going to, if we cut about five minutes, it's an animation and it puts a lot of information. <laughs> So in the Bible, the ideas of heaven and earth are ways of talking about God's space and our space. So I understand our space really well. We live here. There's trees, rivers, mountains. But my understanding of God's space gets a little fuzzy. And what we do get in the Bible are images trying to help us grasp God's space, which is basically inconceivable to us. So these are two very different types of spaces. Yes, they're, they're different in their nature. But here's what's really interesting is that in the Bible, these are not always separate spaces. So think of heaven and earth as like different dimensions that can overlap in the same exact space. So we talk a lot about going to heaven after we die, but this idea of heaven and earth overlapping, we don't talk a lot about that. Which is kind of crazy because the union of heaven and earth is what the story of the Bible is all about. How they were once fully united and then driven apart and about how God is bringing them back together once again. So let's go back to the beginning where heaven and earth, they're completely overlapping. Yeah, this is what uh, the Bible's description of the Garden of Eden is all about. It's a place where God and humanity dwelt together perfectly, no separation, and, and humans then partner with God in building a flourishing, beautiful world and so on. But as humans, we wanted to do things a different way. We wanted God out and we wanted to create a world apart from him. Yeah, so we have these two spaces now. And the Bible actually uses lots of different kinds of words and phrases to refer to these two spaces to make a, a clear distinction. So you've said that these spaces can overlap, though. So explain how that works. Yeah, this is where we have to start talking about temples. Because in the biblical world, you experience God's presence by going to a temple. That's where heaven and earth uh, overlap. Now, there are two types of temples described in the Bible. One is a tabernacle, basically a tent that was built by Moses. And the other 
was this massive building made by Solomon. And these temples were decorated with fruit trees and flowers and images of angels and all kinds of gold and jewels and so on. And these are designed to make you feel like you're going back to the garden. And at the center of the temple was a place called the Holy of Holies, which was like the hot spot of God's presence. Now we can go and be with God again. But not so fast, because the temple also creates a problem. So God's space is full of his presence and goodness and justice and beauty, but human space is full of sin and injustice and the ugliness that results. So how do these spaces overlap if they're so different and they're in conflict with each other? This was resolved through animal sacrifice. Yeah, that's kind of weird. What do animal sacrifices have to do with this? Yeah, the, the idea is this. Animal sacrifices, somehow they absorb the sin when the animal dies in your place. And it creates a clean space, so to speak, where you are now free to enter into the temple and be in God's presence. Okay, so if I'm an Israelite and I live in Jerusalem, I might be able to be in God's presence. But you said the story of the Bible is all of heaven and earth reuniting. Right. So we have to keep going in the story where we come to Jesus in the New Testament. And in the Gospel of John, we hear this claim that God became human in Jesus and made his dwelling among us. Now, this word dwelling is really curious. It, literally, it means he set up a tabernacle among us. And so what John is claiming right here is that Jesus is a temple. He is now the place where heaven and earth overlap. What's interesting about Jesus is that he isn't staying in this safe, clean space. He's running around, hanging out with sinners. He's healing people of their sicknesses and forgiving people of their sins. He's basically creating little pockets of heaven where people can be in God's presence, but he's doing it out there in the middle of the world of sin and death. And he keeps telling everyone that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he even told his followers to pray regularly that God's kingdom come and that his will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. But a lot of people are threatened by Jesus and they kill him, which seems to spoil this whole plan to reunite heaven and earth. But we, we have to go back to a scene earlier on in Jesus' story where John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus isn't just talked about as being a temple. He's also talked about as being the temple sacrifice. Yeah, so, so the cross is now the place where Jesus absorbs sin to create a clean space that is not limited like animal sacrifices. Jesus' sacrifice has the power to keep spreading and spreading and reuniting more and more of heaven and earth. And this is all really great, but it leaves one big question in my mind, which is, what happens when I die? Don't I just fly over to God's space to be with Jesus. Yeah, so a few times in the New Testament, we learn that Christians will be with Jesus in heaven after they die, but that is not the focus of the Bible's story. The focus is on how heaven and earth are being reunited through Jesus and will be completely brought together one day when he returns. So in the book of Revelation, we get this beautiful image of the Garden of Eden, now in the form of a city, coming to end the age of sin and death by redeeming all of human history in a renewed creation. And God's space and human space completely overlap once again. We all might help us as a people in a very, very short spell, one of the big, big story. I, I found that really helpful. And um, it's done by some guys that came out of the end of it. It's called the Bible Project. They've done a whole lot of like wee video clips, animations of, of um, many books of the Bible, many of the main themes of the Bible. And uh, it, it's a guy, Tim Mackey, uh, that, that heads that up. Um, but, but the Bible, as, as we've just seen there, is, is a story. And, and it starts off in Genesis 1. You, know, you can recognize this story, but it starts off as in the beginning God. And then if you go to Revelation, that last chapter, it says, these words are faithful and true. So these are kind of phrases that you find in a, in a book, in a storybook. And the Bible is a storybook. <coughs> it's one huge story. And uh, it's often called an epic narrative because it, take, it took about 1,500 years to write. Uh, it's like uh, our modern day equivalent would be like Lord of the Rings, where there's the trilogy, there's three 
I've never read them. Three really big books written by mm -hmm. Tolkien of the Lord of the Rings. So that's like a, an epic narrative now. But the Bible's an even more epic narrative. And, uh, and, and yet, and yet um, it, it's, it's sometimes not easy for us to understand because it's, it's been written at a different time. It's been written within different cultures, with different people, uh, in, a, in different languages. Um, and, and so for us to, to get an understanding of what it really means, sometimes we struggle. Um, but within the Bible, there is this big picture that we've just described. And we need to be careful then, we need to keep that in mind when we go to look at the Bible, that we don't just go and find the, the bits that we want to read, maybe to to have an understanding of some kind of theological um, truth or even just to read a short story in itself or even just for some inspirational words which are all there but there's this bigger bigger narrative that that's part of the story which is not this and what what i find quite incredible about this whole epic narrative of the bible is that it hasn't finished we are part of that narrative. We are part of that story. And uh, I recently came across a song uh, by Jeremy Riddle on the Iron Vineyard, and, and it was it was, a, it was a song, "All Is for Your Glory." And the chorus line is really powerful, and it says this: "Catch me up in your story, all my life for your glory." Catch me up in your story all my life for your own. And the Bible is full of people that have been caught up in the story. If you, if you look, at, look at Hebrews 11, you see a list of people who, who couldn't see what lay ahead, but they trusted in the promises of God and they got caught up in God's story. And, and, and it says in Hebrews 11, 16, it says that these were men and women who confessed that they felt like strangers and foreigners on the earth, but they desired a heavenly country. Yes. And I just love that. I just love that. And that is not this story. That is, they were wanting the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, to come down. And, and many of that was in Hebrews 11 were suffered and were persecuted for holding, for, for holding on to those promises that God had given them. And yet the theme of their life was that they were caught up in God's story. And all of their life, literally all of their life, was for His glory. And, and you know, like last week we were considering Isaiah 61. And that is a, is a picture of uh, the kingdom of God. It's a prophecy from Isaiah about the kingdom of God. And these, these words well, are, are incredibly powerful and they were used by Jesus to describe what he was fulfilling and coming to be part of the kingdom of God. He said that the chains will be broken, prisoners will be set free, poor will become rich, the hungry will be fed, the blind can see, those that are dressed in rags will now be, will have got, be given garments of praise. They'll be clothed in, 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 in garments of salvation, of righteousness. That is the story of the kingdom. That is the story of, of, of the kingdom of heaven coming to the earth. And so all of these stories that, that, that we read about Jesus, they're all interwoven into this big echo of the kingdom of God. And uh, when, we, when we pick up the New Testament, we, we read so many of these stories. And, you know, even if you go back into to Mark chapter 1, when you read the, the story here, and um, just, you know, we, we went through Mark recently um, as a church, but just Mark 1, you read the story of, of the fishermen who were caught up in that story, and they left their boats. That was Simon, Andrew, James, and John. So that song, Catch Me Up in Your Story, All My Life in Your Glory. Well, these fishermen then, they got caught up in the story of God. It goes on, it tells the story about a man, how Jesus drove out and he was a certain man. 
and a, and a, and a man who is possessed by a demon is, is touched by the authority of Jesus and he's caught up in the story of God, the kingdom of heaven comes down. We read of the healing of, of Simon's mother-in-law. She was caught up in the story. And all her life was for God's glory. And it's interesting that some of these women that are there in these stories at the start, and I was, I was here recently, I just thought of the fact that at the cross, it was women who were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the men. <laughs> the women's. The last time the men were seen, I think it was in the, in the garden or in the courtyard, but it was the women. It was the women who, who were there. They were caught up in that soap, and they, they were there with Jesus right at the cross. And that's how we, we know what happened at of the cross because of their testimony, because of them sharing that story. And then in one other point, there's a leper as well who's caught up in the story of God. And so as you go through the whole New Testament and you read of more and more people who are caught up in God's story, and it's often ordinary people, it's marginalized people, it's poor, it's weak, it's, it's the foreigner, it's the immigrant, it's the insignificant, it's the ignored person. They're caught up in, in God's story. And as you read, you discover that story that spreads out, it starts off in Jerusalem, and it goes to Judea, to Samaria, all around the Mediterranean, and then to the world. And yet, it comes here. Yes. It comes here. Because the story is not finished. And we're part, this we group here mm -hmm. is part of an epic narrative. <laughs> so how do we respond? What Jesus said, he said, repent <clears throat> and believe. Repent. You know, that, that, that we clearly showed it, it talked about how the world, heaven and earth was overlapped at, at creation. And, and God, God gave Adam and Eve a choice. You know, there's a tree of life, the tree in the garden, the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, you can follow my ways or you can choose. You decide what is right and wrong. And Adam and Eve chose themselves what was right and what was wrong. And that's the story of mankind throughout all of history. And, and, and Jesus said, I want you to repent of that. I want you to trust me because in me there is life. And he's saying, I also want you to believe. But believe that I am king. I am king, and I have a kingdom that is far greater, that is far better, that is full of life. And he says, I want to repent, I want you to turn around, away from falling your own way, and I want you to believe, to believe in the kingdom. That's how we respond. Another response is in that prayer of that song. It's saying, catch me up. In your story, can that be our prayer? Lord, catch me up in your story. Amen. May my life be for your glory. What a prayer of consecration. You know, in, in Jesus' life, in John 1, it, it says that when he came, and the words became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And this is my final point, is, is that I, I just think something a story can be full of words. But in Jesus, the story, the words, the words became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And our, our story is, is, it can be a story of words, but it really is a story of flesh. It's a story of us living the kingdom of it. In the places that that God has placed us, and I, I, I love the wee diagram in that. And I, I, I said this last, but I loved it because it, <coughs> there was a picture there of Earth, and it was it was Earth, and it was like if I just draw it, there was this overlap that was going on, but in the Earth 
that we live in just now. You see, this is heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of earth. There is pockets of heaven. And that's where we are. We are in this people. So where are we scatter? Where are we scatter? Where we are is the kingdom of heaven. And, and you know, isn't that good news? Yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah. And uh, so please see yourself as part of a big, big story that we're thrilled to be part of. And uh, it's a story that's going on. And let's just pray. Father, I thank you for the story you've given us in the Bible. And I pray that that will help us to see us as part of that story and part of that that it's not just about us but it's about you coming down to earth and dwelling amongst us and bringing heaven to earth and I pray that each one of us each one of us in this church would see that in the life that by your spirit that we would bring heaven to earth we pray this Lord in Jesus name